Hello and welcome to a short video review of the Samsung QE65 Q9FN. I'm Steve Withers and I'm a fully qualified uh, professional calibrator and also a professional reviewer and I'm fully qualified with ISF and also with THX. Um, if you want to read the full in-depth review then please go to the link in the description or by clicking the card in the top right of the screen. Right, so the Samsung Q9FN. Now if that model number sounds familiar that's because it is. Last year's model was also called the Q9F. The way you can tell the two apart is that this year's model is the Q9FN. So look out for the N at the end of the model number. And as with last year, it's a QLED TV. What does that mean? Well, basically it's an LCD panel with an LED backlight, but it uses a quantum dot filter, giving it a much wider color gamut and also purer colors as well. Now this TV is a 65 inch model and it retails for £3,799, which is, you know, about right for a flagship 65 inch model. Um, it's comparable with pricing for say 65 inch OLED TVs on the marketplace right now, the flagship models that is. Now, this is obviously their flagship model. It's the top model from Samsung so far this year. And therefore they have pulled out all the stops in terms of both features and build quality and um, picture quality. So in terms of the design, I really like this TV. It's very minimalist, it's very simple. It just basically has a, a, uh, a sort of a black edge around the side of the panel, which is kind of a, a sort of about three centimeters deep because this is a direct LED backlight TV. It's got LEDs directly behind the panel. It's not edged and that is the big difference when it comes to this model from last year's flagship TV. So it's a bit deeper, let's say about three and a half centimeters, um, but it's a nice simple, very, very reminiscent of Sony's monolith design from, from a few years ago. Uh, and so I like it, simple, basic sort of block shape, rectangular, uh, screen. Everything's really about the screen. I don't want it to detract from the screen, so basically there's nothing to detract from it in terms of design. And it sits on a metallic stand with sort of a, a cylindrical front bit and, and an angled bit at the rear, and that attaches the TV. And then you can put a panel over that attachment so you can hide it. And it, it follows the same 360 degree design ethos from last year. So what that means basically is that the TV can look quite cool from any angle. So if you look at it from the back, it's got a kind of a grooved effect, which um, is quite attractive. There's a, a, a one single um, sort of air vent near the top. There are visa mounts, four by four hundred visa mounts and also where you attach the stand. Now in terms of um, other attachments you might notice at the back of the TV there is almost nothing else. That's because everything connects to the one connect box and I think this is a great idea. I don't really understand why more manufacturers haven't copied this because I think it's really clever. Everything goes into the one connect box and this year is particularly impressive because literally everything goes into the one connect box. So you've got four HDMI inputs in there, you've got three USB 2.0 uh, ports, you've got an Ethernet port built in Wi-Fi of course as well. There's also dual tuners for terrestrial and satellite TV. There's also an optical digital uh, output as well. And then you might notice there's also a power cable there as well. So the power goes into the One Connect box and then you have a single very thin cable that connects to the TV itself. And that turns everything, image, sound and power, all go to the TV uh, via this one thin cable. Which basically means that um, you, you can take, take all the clutter and the cables that would be attached to a TV and put them somewhere else and just have this one cable going to it. Particularly useful if you're wall mounting because then you've got one cable to hide and your TV's going to look really nice on the wall. So this is the remote control for this year and it's very much the same as last year. It's made of metal, got a nice premium feel to it, uh, very comfortable to hold in the hand and it has uh, a central control here for um, navigation and enter. It's also got play pause, it's got the home button, volume and channel and back and then there's a button for the numbers and color buttons and then there's a button here, this is a new button this year, that is for the ambient mode, come back to that in a minute. And there's also a button for voice control, which I did try, it does work, but uh, it's very specific about what kind of commands you give it before it'll understand what you want it to do. Maybe it's just me, but I don't think it's intuitive as some other voice controlled systems. And on the back, you can easily open it by just pressing this button here, it makes changing the batteries a lot easier as well. So you can use this to control it, also you can of course use a smart app. This year it's called Smart Things, and this app is designed to control not only your TV, but your entire smart home. So any products that are, that are, that are you know, compatible, it can control it, and you can use your TV as a hub, and you, and you can see um, your other devices and what they're up to. So it could be the fridge, or it could be you know, a Hoover, or whatever. Um, in terms of the smart platform, as I say, it's very good. It's slick, it's fast, there's lots of processing power on this TV, which is excellent news, so you don't get any crashes, it's not slow or anything like that. And the, uh, the system is basically the same as last year. So you, you press the home button, along the bottom you get a launcher bar, and then you can go through, scroll through, and select what you want, be that Netflix or Amazon or a, a connected device. Um, and then if, when you select that particular option, then you get more options above that on another layer, and you can go up and select those. Um, simple, intuitive, easy to use, and very effective. There's some new features 
features this year, including, as I said, the ambient mode, which basically means the TV can go into ambient mode. And you, all you basically get is a, uh, a screen. And you can select what the screen can be. It can be an image. It can be a photo. Um, you can even take a picture of the wall behind it. It can replicate that. So you can sort of, the TV can sort of disappear. Um, and it will show you like the time and the news and the weather and things like that. Um, basically, it's an alternative to leaving the TV in standby mode. Um, it uses about 60 watts. This TV did, 65 inches. Now, you can adjust the brightness of the um, ambient image, and therefore you could reduce the power consumption. But I'm um, just mentioning that that's what it used on this TV in its default mode. Um, so you've got that. you also got, um, uh, as with last year's TVs, auto detection. So when you connect new devices to the One Connect box, it will detect them, it will tell you what it is, and it will actually set up the command, the remote commands for the remote control. So that's also very handy. It's a really intuitive and simple system. One thing you can do this year that's completely new, using the Smart Things app, is you can actually set up the TV using your mobile phone, which again is really easy. Uh, so I've got to say, uh, in terms of user interface, this is, this is an excellent television. It's really impressive. It's one of the best I've ever seen in terms of both features, user interface, uh, and making the whole experience as, as slick and as intuitive and as easy as possible. So excellent top marks there to Samsung. So in terms of the uh, picture quality, well, let's move on to that, shall we? As I mentioned already, it's, uh, it's got a full of direct LED backlight, got local dimming as well. I did actually, they wouldn't officially tell me what the, uh, what the number of zones were, but I counted just under 500, um, which is quite high, not as high as I've, I've, I've counted, but I'm certainly up there. And they've also got a new local dimming algorithm that, uh, that is designed to really deliver deep blacks, but also adjust the uh, fine edges where, 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 where an object might cross between two zones. Um, I've got to say that that actually was particularly impressive in operation. So you've got a 4K panel, 65 inch, uh, Ultra HD panel, uh, VA panel. So viewing angles are an issue. Um, you know, the, I think it's better than last year, but you know, at the end of the day, the limitation of VA panels is that they have a limited viewing angle, but obviously they do deliver the deep blacks, which is very important for an LCD television. Um, it's got uh, HDR, of course, high dynamic range support. It supports HDR10, hybrid log gamma, and HDR10+. Plus. It does not support Dolby Vision, so bear that in mind. That's something that's important to you. Um, and uh, I've got to say that in terms of picture quality, absolutely stunning. I mean, as I mentioned, it uses a direct LED backlight. It also has local dimming, and it uses a VA panel. That does mean that the viewing angles are quite narrow. I mean, that's just a limitation of VA panels, but you have great native blacks. You have really effective local dimming. So um, watching SDR content, there was absolutely no blooming at all. Uh, you know, white, a white credit against the black background looked spot on. So the local dimming works really well. Occasionally, it can be a little bit aggressive and you could lose some detail just above black, but I've got to say I'm prepared to sacrifice that for really deep blacks and also a very bright image. So when you're talking about SDR content uh, in our testing, for example, it measured extremely accurately in terms of the grayscale. Gamma was a little bit out, um, but we could easily calibrate that using the 2 and 20 point white balance control. And it also had a very accurate color gamma out of the box. Again, we could tweak that afterwards using the color management system. The results were really accurate images, nice natural colors, lots of detail in the 4K panel, and a, um, a lovely grayscale and gamma as well. A really effective image. And like I say, the, the local dimming was very, very, very good. So. I loved the SDR image, and I'm used to using an OLED TV. So uh, there were times when I, I didn't even realize I'd forgotten. It wasn't an OLED TV I was looking at, I was actually looking at an LCD TV, and I think that's about as high a praise as I can, uh, I can offer to an LCD television. You know, it basically looked like an OLED. Um, where the difference comes in, of course, is when you move on to HDR, because unlike an OLED, which is very limited in terms of its brightness, with an HDR uh, um, signal onto an LCD television, you're talking about a much, much brighter image. Now, this TV measured in dynamic mode over 3,000 nits. Uh, obviously, I wouldn't use that mode because it's very inaccurate in terms of color accuracy and its blues are basically, well, whites are basically blue. But um, even in the uh, calibrated movie mode, it was still 1,830 nits, which makes it the highest um, peak brightness I've measured on any TV to date. So the HDR experience was absolutely stellar. I mean, it delivered incredible peak highlights. Specular highlights were amazing on this TV, uh, but also Whole, whole images, like you say, for example, snowbound scenes in the, Reven the Revenant. Um, you know, you still had lots of bright brightness in, the, in a, a white image on the screen, whereas a, a OLED, I think, would struggle with that. So you had a very bright image, really bright specular highlights, deep blacks as well, though, thanks to the local dimming, of course. Nice wide color gamut. This TV measured 72% of Rec 2020, basically 98% of DCI-P3 using UV coordinates. So uh, almost 100% of DCI-P3 is covered. The tracking was pretty good. And um, I've got to say that, uh, as I say, the, the HDR performance was absolutely stellar. If there's one thing that this TV is particularly good at, it is HDR. And also though, not just HDR movies, of course, HDR gaming. You can game in SDR or HDR, you can game in 2K or 4K. And um, the input lag was just 21 milliseconds, which is 
again, same as last year, but, uh, but still low enough for, I think, any gamer will be happy with 21 milliseconds. And that applies to whether it was uh, 1080p, 4K, um, HDR or SDR. So a really, really good TV for watching HDR movies and also, I think, for particularly for gamers, because obviously it's an LCD panel, so you're not worrying about, uh, about any kind of image, image retention or screen burn as well. You're getting, a, you're getting a really bright, punchy gaming image. And another look, nice little feature, actually, for gamers is that when you, uh, when, you when you select the HDMI input for your console, be it an Xbox One or um, a PS4, the TV actually will detect it as a gaming console and automatically go into game mode, giving you the lowest input lag. So that's quite a nice feature as well. You don't have to select it anymore, it just does it for you. Like I said, it's, it's a, a complete package as a TV. It looks stunning, particularly with HDR, but also it's very, very impressive with SDR as well. It's beautifully made, nicely designed. It has a, a really uh, comprehensive set of features, a uh, really intuitive, easy to use smart platform, and, um, and uh, loads of nice little extra features like things like going into game mode automatically or selecting and, and detecting your in, uh, new inputs um, and, t and setting them up for you. And also the One Connect box, which uh, I think is a brilliant idea. And I mean, th this one little thin cable going to your TV just makes it so much tidier around the TV itself. It is a, a, a superb overall package. And for that reason, I am awarding this TV a reference status badge. I'm giving it 10 out of 10 reference status. I think it is a complete television. It does everything a TV needs to do. I think it gives you a superb picture, but also gives you a superb experience. And that is equally as important, I think, for most people, as well as the picture quality. So, I mean, absolutely stunning television. Congratulations to Samsung for coming back this year so strongly with the uh, Q9 FN. And um, I hope you've enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching.